Hi, and thanks for watching another video from Pro Audio Development where I try to make videos that for the do it yourselfer or the average guy can do with Pro Audio. I've been doing Pro Audio for probably a little over 25 years now. I know the Pro ways and I know <laughs> the wrong ways to do it. So, today, what I want to show you is a very interesting subject. I'm not sure how long this video is going to last because a lot of it's going to be talking. Um, I ended up going to a gig one time and I walked in the door and they said, Alright, you just show up, you run the PA system, we don't have an operator. I said, Okay, I walked in the door, looked up in the, in the bass drum, the kick drum, and there was a um, SM58 vocal microphone up inside the kick drum just laying inside. So we went through and, you know, I, I looked at everything and it looked pretty good. And I was like, you know, hey, you, this is the only microphone you got? And I said, yeah. So we were at a gig and, you know, we lost our kick mic, so this is what we use now. So I look out front and they've got like six 18s out front. I'm thinking, man, you, you know, this is probably not going to be exactly what I'd like to see. So we did sound check, you know, and went through the whole spiel and everything, and yeah, it sounded okay, you know, the, I was very surprised how well the, it worked, but I just didn't have that low-end grunt like I wanted. So I asked him, I was like, hey, do you guys have a, a cable that's uh, XLR to balanced? And they said, sure. And I said, do you have a spare wedge monitor? And they said, oh yeah, yeah, we got some on the truck. So I said, hey, how about going and grabbing that, and uh, let's try something. <clears throat> so they grabbed it. Ended up taking a wedge monitor like this one and laid it on its side, scooted it up against the base, the front of the bass drum, and routed this into the PA system. I used this for a sub kick, and it works quite well. I've done it before, just uh, playing around, experimenting, and what happens is this driver becomes a microphone when you wire it into the PA. Now, this is what they brought me. When they brought me the cable, um, so it was a uh, XLR <clears throat> to quarter inch balanced, and I connected this up. Worried that you normally don't have TRS tip ring sleeve. Now, excuse me, you don't have TRS inside the wedge monitor. Typically, inside the wedge monitor, you'll have this. <clears throat> would just be a TS tip sleeve you got your positive and negative and that's how that's how that works well what happens is when you plug it in the little brush that connects to the tip it actually works just fine to where it touches here and the R will ride right here in the middle and it's not quite like the old trick of plugging in and half unplugging it. It actually works good just using one of these. So along the way, after the trick, I've done this one. I've built this cable. And on my website, I have a blog I wrote about it. And this is the TR. This is the uh, XLR, and this is a TS. And basically, what I have here is this goes to pin two, and this goes to pin three. And pin one just terminates inside the cable. Typically, on a cable like this, you'll actually want to leave one all the way up to here. You can connect one and three together and probably be okay, but that's not the way I made it. So, we bring out our cable tester here. And I don't think this shorty will go all the way through here. Let's see if I can find a place to sit the camera down. And adjust it. So... Yeah, I don't think this is going to go all the way around here. Yeah, see that won't go. Well, what we'll do is we'll take this cable. And I just wanted to show you. If I can plug it in right. That we have. T goes to uh, pin 2, well, this will be pin 1, so you got S sleeve going to pin 1, 
pin 2 is going to tip, pin 3 is going to ring. Okay? Alright, so enough of talking. Let me show you how it works. So, you can make one of these or you can buy one of these if you want, but typically this is not what you find in a toolbox, the Soundman's toolbox. This will work. So, I'm going to leave this cable up here for right now. And uh, this this goes to input number two. Input number one, I just had a microphone over here, and uh, it was just uh, check 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 one two check one two one two check check one two. Now this is a weird ground situation because you hear the buzz. Now I'm gonna let go of the microphone, and lay it down. So see, just that would be a, a problem in pin one. You would actually lift pin one on the cable to fix that problem. But that's another video. We're not going to worry about that right now. So we turn that gain down. <clears throat> so here's our cable. It ends up here. So obviously you can't plug this directly into the wedge monitor. So what we'll do <clears throat> is we're going to use the TS to begin with. Okay, plug it in here. Do this one handed. It's amazing how well sometimes you get used to plugging things in when you shoot videos by yourself. You now, watch me not be able to do it though. There we go. Okay, now it's already starting to hum. And I'll actually turn the gain up some more so it starts feeding back. That's just doing that because it, that microphone can hear the speaker now. So what we'll do is I'm going to set the, uh, I'll hold the camera right here. One, two, ooh, one, two, check. Hey, hey, hey. I know that's crude, I don't have a drum here, but that just shows you that this works. This will go through this connection into, this is your front of house mixer, and then through your power amps, and then into the, and out the main speaker. Okay, so let's turn that down and unplug this. Matter of fact, we'll just unplug the number one here. <clears throat> now, this is the standard cable that you'll always have in your toolbox. If you've got uh, a mixing console that has standard quarter inch outputs for your monitors, then this is usually what you'll do. You'll plug this into the aux out. And matter of fact, this is off of my mixer. And this shows you this is aux 6. And this goes to the subs. So, grab you one of these cables, okay? And plug it in here. Whoop. And then directly into your snake, turn the gain down. Okay, so now turn all that down and we'll ease the gain up. So there's our feedback that we were hearing earlier. That's a good almost like a controlled feedback. I'm not touching anything. Just when me moving away goes away, coming closer. Okay. Let me pull some bass out of it. And I was kind of using this as my bass drum. And you can hear it over here. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. So there is a homemade 
sub kick. Uh, certain shows would require this, you know, if you want uh, extra low, low end. This, uh, it doesn't take very much of this driver to move to create the voltage going the opposite direction. And you will notice that the signal will be extremely hot. When you put this in front of a bass drum, you'll probably have to pad the signal, or you'll have the signal almost all the way down. Um, there are also, you get into things called phase, <clears throat> and you know, you'll probably would need to experiment with the phase between the kick mic inside and this sub kick. When I run uh, front of house at Marathon Church, then sometimes I'll end up inverting the phase in one of the microphones. And some people say it's always the inside mic, some say it's always the outside mic. Hey, I just, during the show, I'll play it and I'll change the invert polarity or hit the phase button off on, off on between each one until I hear what sounds best. So that's another video. Look for the, another video. Um, called a uh, phase invert cable and what I'm going to do is in this other video maybe I'm going to use this cable is I'll show you how to how to change this pin orientation on this cable to make a phase invert cable and that's pretty important people who run a top and bottom snare mic one of the two mics are going to have the the phase change on it or the polarity inverted so couple the two videos together and you should be able to make your own homemade sub kick if you do home recordings and want that extra extra low end rumble in your your kick drum then this is probably the trick that you want to use all right i think that's the end of the video um it <laughs> i i will admit yeah it does look kind of crude if you have a wedge monitor scooted up against the uh, bass drum but if no one knows what you're doing, then it just looks like another piece of gear on the stage. I will say, the only problem I've had with this is uh, with this sitting up on the stage. Let me unplug this. With this up on the stage, what happens is all you're seeing is this. And it'd be nice if you had a 90 degree, and most of the 90 degrees are going to be the TS, like an instrument cable. I wanted to show you the TS and the TRS for that fact so that you can know that you can make one of these out of an instrument cable 90 degrees. Because what happens is I, used to, uh, I would play with this in the youth room because they didn't have a sub kick. And what would happen is people would stand or they'd sit on this thing or they'd prop their leg up while they're doing a guitar solo. And they always, they would try, this thing would end up getting bent over. And the little receptacle sockets here would break or they would bend this over. Matter of fact, I've got one here. This is a TS that was inside a wedge monitor and got got kicked over. So this is what happens. So you have to make yourself a little 90 for this. Uh, or be very careful or, you know, whatever. So... If you've got to use this trick, or if you're using this in the studio, that's the only thing I would look out for. Okay, well, I didn't waste it about 13, 14 minutes of your time, so I figure I'll go ahead and close this video up and get started on the other one about making a, a, a phase invert cable. Be looking for that video. I'm going to shoot it here in just a second. And uh, I thank you for watching the kind of website, rickseedperry.com, and you can leave me a comment below. I know some of the pro guys are going to bash me on this video, but hey, you know, if if you need to use this, if you need the low end, you're in a situation where you don't have a good kick mic, then you can throw any microphone in there for the attack, and you can do this for the low end. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up. Alright, thanks for watching.